Welcome to Booth Museum. I'm Jeff Donaldson, curator, and with me is Bonnie Adams, uh, curator of the Kenneth Freeman Legacy Collection. How are you? Wonderful. Great. Jeff, it's really, uh, it's really wonderful to be here. I walked in through the door of this exhibition and I was just overwhelmed. It's, you brought Ken into this room. I could feel him as soon as I caught in here. It's wonderful. Thank you. Well, that was kind of the, the goal. Um, in all the exhibitions we do here at the booth, we, we do want them to be moving. And in this case, uh, we had an artist uh, who had, uh, was recently deceased, and uh, he had done quite a volume of work in his career in different mediums. And I couldn't help but want to capture that. And I think part of that was really assisted by the fact that we we have his, you, you saved his studio, yes. that um, almost as if kind of as he just left. And so basically I use that premise as uh, to design the exhibition space. And so basically what we have is we have uh, Ken's entire studio here preserved and we recreated it. It might not look 100% like um, it did from uh, his home, but it's a first for us because this is the first time that we have incorporated an artist studio uh, in an exhibition. So it's been a magnificent opportunity. Well, I'm glad that it was uh, Ken's studio that was the first opportunity. I thought it was wonderful when I came in and I looked at the, looked at the studio his eyeglasses were right there. I mean, I had just taken them off his palette and put them in the package and sent them to you, and that's exactly how he would set them up, just as you have them on the rims. I didn't tell you that, well, <laughs> but you figured it out. Well, it was almost intuitive, that, um, and I thought very much uh, about Ken's spirit still, mm -hmm. that, that he, his legacy is, I thought of the, the, legacy, the title of the collection, The Legacy, mm -hmm. and also we have the artist at work, and so the idea was that, well, Ken did all this work during his lifetime, and but his legacy is still going on. Mm -hmm. So in a way, he's, his, his artwork is, is still at work with the visitor. And so to incorporate this uh, in the middle of the exhibition space seemed to be the, the right thing to do. It also really reflects what Ken was about in his work. He was a working artist. That's all he did. He worked from sunup to sundown, he would work. He would be, he'd be painting, he'd be on the phone uh, promoting his own work, and he was very proud of it, and that's all he wanted to do was paint and be at work, and uh, I thought that was a great idea, just even the treatment on the walls, <laughs> well, the, actually, the loose paint, that's, that's excellent. Yeah. That ties in with that, because I wanted to have um, something that looked unfinished right. on one hand, so that's why you have the irregular border. We actually had this blue coating of paint existing here, and maybe it was kind of making me think of uh, a sky color or clouds. Mm -hmm. and the that big kind open of, west? <laughs> well, that's part of it, the big open west, and that uh, one of Ken's quotes that you use a lot is live your dream. Yes, and absolutely. And so that really resonated within uh, the design of this exhibition as well. It's not just that the artist's work is still going on, but that Ken really did live his dream. Oh, he did. And that the dream is still living. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is to uh, make the, the, am I correct by saying his studio space is kind of like his dream factory or where he, <laughs> That's a good he way brought to put all it. of That's his great. dreams to life? Yes, he did. He, uh, he, he used to watch cowboy movies when he was a little boy, and he knew at that point he was going to be, uh, you know, a, an artist full time. And so he put those two things together all through his life and then this is where it, it came out in final product. Another thing too that moved me is that Ken seemed to really uh, have strong relationships with people and yes. this sounds like that was from a very early age but we see this in, in so many of the different faces and peoples of the West that are represented in this show, of course especially the Buffalo Soldiers which we're trying to highlight in the studio. Right, and Ken was a Buffalo Soldier too. Um, Ken, as soon as you met Ken, you, you'd meet him and talk to him for about maybe 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and suddenly you'd have an immense comfort. And he could just get to know you really, really well. So he would go in and visit uh, the, the Native Americans and they, they just took him in as one of theirs. He, 
they used to trade with him. They loved his art, so a lot of the artifacts that Ken acquired were trading with the Indians who wanted his artwork. And this is very important in Western art and American art, uh, is the fact that uh, Ken works from reference. And yes. And his, his mag the magnificent collection that, that he brought together, he used this as reference material in his work, which we've tried to kind of recreate here, that he's working on uh, a couple of Buffalo Soldier works. And of course, that dovetails nicely with this, the timing of this exhibition, because it is you know, the Black History commemorations yes. are going on now in January and February. That's it's excellent timing. The little cat in the back, called El Gato, that, I don't know if you know the story about that. But no, I'd love to hear it. Okay. Well, Ken was on one of his touring trips to pick up some new photography, meet some new models, and he met this little girl sitting on a wood pile, and he wanted to photograph her and paint her. And she said, you can, but you have to buy my cat. So he bought the cat, and that cat is here. It's in, wow. th it's in here. In, in the studio, and it's also in the painting, right. which is in the back row over there. And that's how he accumulated a lot of things. He loved doing mountain men. And a lot of the mountain men would come to Ken and say, will you please paint me? Because they would see their friends being painted and realize what a wonderful experience that was. So he often traded for their skins and their hats and the fur hats. Which we, of course, we have, yes, uh, have those one represented right in here. as well. Mm -hmm. um, what about his uh, the, the the Pony Express riders and the Wells Fargo subject? And that was particularly um, important in Arizona. Can you tell us a little bit how that kind of came mm -hmm. about and why he really zeroed on that subject? He uh, Ken painted a lot of paintings for the Prada del Sol Rodeo, and so he was he was one of the JCs. And the, that that was he was part of that organization. And then they were doing the, um, the Pony Express is a group from that uh, organization that do a whole ride. And they wanted him to somehow capture that. So he painted three paintings that they use for the Pony Express. They produce posters for them. And then those posters went into the U.S. mail stations, so they were sold at the post offices. And there were special little um, commemorative letters that were posted and carried in the mailbag on the Pony Express, and uh, you could purchase those and keep them as, as collectibles. In fact, two of the Hashtag Pony Express posters are hanging in the Library of Congress in the Legacy Collection. One is called Campin' at the Birdie, and the other one is the Handoff. 